Today I want to tell you about another type of foot fracture, one that's caused by repetitive stress on the bone itself. Welcome, I'm Dr. Steve Pinney. In this episode, we learn all about a Jones fracture. A Jones fracture is a relatively uncommon condition that has a tendency to occur due to repetitive stress on the outside part of the foot, specifically the base of the fifth metatarsal. This condition is named after a 19th century orthopedic surgeon, considered to be the father of modern orthopedics, Sir Robert Jones. The Jones fracture needs to be differentiated from a fifth metatarsal base avulsion fracture, which is a much more common injury. Most fifth metatarsal fractures are not Jones fractures. So what are the symptoms of a Jones fracture? Pain, and this can occur suddenly following a minor or moderate trauma. In the case of a Jones fracture, there is often already some baseline discomfort in the area due to microscopic fracturing of the bone before it breaks completely. An increase in activity level, for example, a new training program, can become the straw that breaks the camel's back, so to speak. The patient can feel the sudden pain of the fracture. So why does a Jones fracture occur? As I mentioned earlier, these types of fractures are caused by repetitive stresses on the bone. The loads going through the foot are two to three times body weight while walking and three to five times body weight while running. So cumulatively, the foot is subject to a lot of repetitive loading. Patients with high arched feet are more likely to suffer a Jones fracture because a high arched foot shape dictates that the force is going to go through the outside part of the foot. The base of the fifth metatarsal where the Jones fracture will occur is the weak link and therefore breaks first. This fracture is akin to wiggling a paper clip back and forth until the metal breaks. Initial treatment of a Jones fracture. The first course of treatment is to protect the foot and control the pain. Usually all significant weight-bearing activity should be stopped. Crutches are often necessary. Icing and elevation may be helpful to decrease the pain. A boot or cast is usually used to immobilize the foot. Some Jones fractures can be treated conservatively, while some others might require surgery to stabilize the fracture. If the fracture is not displaced, and it is the first time the fracture has occurred, it may be possible to treat a Jones fracture without surgery. Conservative treatment involves immobilizing the fracture for a period of six to eight weeks in a cast or a boot. Activities can be gradually advanced once healing is noted on x-ray. The advantage of conservative treatment is that a good result can often be obtained. The disadvantages are the amount of recovery time and the time period the patient needs to protect the foot. The chances of the bone not healing is greater, and these factors lead to a higher likelihood of refracture in the future. Surgical treatment. Many Jones fractures require or will benefit from surgery. Typically, a large screw is placed across the fracture site to compress and stabilize the fracture. Sometimes it might be necessary to add a bone graft to the fracture to increase the likelihood of healing. In some patients with Jones fractures, especially if the fracture has recurred, it may be necessary to perform additional surgery to change the shape of the foot so that the load during walking is not concentrated over the outside part of the foot. This surgery might include cutting and shifting the heel bone to the outside to realign the foot. Even with surgery, the recovery is prolonged with no weight bearing or limited weight bearing through the heel only for six to eight weeks or longer until the bones have healed. Muscle weakness, stiffness of the foot, and loss of balance is normal due to the prolonged immobilization of the foot during the recovery period. So a rehabilitation program to regain strength, motion, and balance is essential once the bone has adequately healed. It's often a year or more before full recovery has been obtained. I hope that this presentation has helped assist your understanding of the Jones fracture. For more information, I invite you to click the link below in the description of this video. 
Until next time, I'm Dr. Steve Penny. Thank you.